Bill and his wife secretly betrayed us while my sister was carrying the precious gift of life, and I had no choice but to serve them with divorce papers. My name is Alex, a 33-year-old man, and I had been happily married to Evelyn, a 30-year-old woman, for six blissful years. Our love story began with a couple of years of dating, a tale that was filled with laughter, shared dreams, and the promise of forever. Evelyn, a woman with boundless caring, extroverted charm, and unyielding ambition, knew exactly what she wanted from life. Our journey together was a vibrant tapestry woven with the threads of love and shared experiences, until one day when the threads began to unravel and Evelyn's behavior took a perplexing turn. But to fully understand our story, let's step back in time to when I first laid eyes on Evelyn. Picture a graduation ceremony, a day filled with excitement and anticipation. It was my sister Jenna's graduation, and it was on that day that I met Evelyn. She was one of Jenna's close friends, and the spark between us ignited amidst the celebratory atmosphere. Evelyn, Jenna, my brother-in-law Max, and I all had a connection dating back to our college days. Whenever we gathered, the air was filled with infectious joy and the lively chatter of college memories. Jenna, much like me, was an ambivert, finding comfort in both introversion and extroversion. Yet, in Evelyn's presence, even Jenna felt a touch of intimidation. You see, Evelyn had been a social butterfly in college, a person everyone wanted to be around. As for Max, he cast a shadow over Jenna's purity. Always trying to outshine her, he made me feel sorrow for my sister. It was evident that she deserved better. Our story, it seems, had all the makings of a beautiful fairy tale, but life had other plans. The betrayal by Bill and Evelyn blindsided us, leaving me with no choice but to take the painful step of serving them divorce papers. As I recount this chapter of my life, I can't help but wonder about the twists and turns that fate has in store for us all. Life is like an intricate tapestry, with each thread representing a moment, a choice, or a person who weaves their way into our story. Sometimes, the most unexpected events unravel our plans, just as a single thread can disrupt the entire pattern. In the midst of this heartbreak, I find solace in the resilience of the human spirit. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, I too will emerge from this trial stronger and wiser. Betrayal may have torn our lives apart, but it cannot extinguish the flame of hope that burns within me. So, as I navigate this uncharted territory, I invite you to reflect on your own journey. What threads have shaped your life's tapestry, and how have you found strength in the face of adversity? Life's challenges may test us, but they also provide an opportunity for growth and transformation. As for me and Evelyn, things have not been good between us recently. As I mentioned earlier, she was a social butterfly in college, and her behavior was still the same with no change. She works in the design industry, and most of the time, she was busy partying, hosting house parties, etc., which was pretty annoying. I never showed my annoyance or that I had a problem with it to her because I didn't want to hurt her, and it was also her way of socializing in her industry. But all of this clearly built a distance between me and her. I work overseas in the Merchant Marine, so I'm usually overseas for six to seven months and at home for the rest of the time. My last vacation at home was not so pleasant. We often ran into arguments, sometimes for silly things and sometimes for serious issues. I'll come to that eventually. No matter how much I tried, I felt Evelyn was just not understanding what I wanted to convey. She was just not ready to mend things. As my vacation was getting over, I was restless. I didn't want to leave home with the ongoing bitterness in our relationship. So, I swallowed my ego again and decided to confront Evelyn about what was going on in our relationship. I made a special dinner for her, and she understood that I wanted to talk about something, but she was happy with the effort. I told her I don't have any problem with her going out with her friends but I just didn't like her spending her entire night partying and then sleeping off for half of the next day nursing her hangover. I told her that I just wanted to spend some quality time with her as soon as I left for work in 10 days, and this whole time, I felt very distant from each other, and I don't like it when you stay far from me. She silently listened to me and acknowledged my problems. She assured me she would give time to our relationship and put her party plans on hold until I was there. 
I was happy that we were able to come to the same page without any argument. We made out, and things heated up between us when she stopped me in between and started searching through the drawer for protection. She couldn't find them and asked me to go get one. It annoyed me. I asked her why she didn't want to do it without protection. It's been six years since our marriage, and we were ready to have a baby. She stopped me in between and asked me if I was stupid. She didn't want to get pregnant and be a mother. I told her that it was her decision, and I respected that, but I wanted to become a father, and she knew it before we decided to marry each other, and she also wanted that at that time. I asked her why she changed her mind after marrying me. She told me that she doesn't know, and she just doesn't want to ruin her body because of a stupid baby. My blood boiled at her statement, and I yelled at her to mind her language and stormed out of the room. She followed me outside, shouting that I couldn't force her into this. I stopped in the hallway and told her that I was not forcing her to do anything. I understand it's her choice, but I was angry with her language. I came back with protection, but I was not in the mood to do anything, so I lay on the other side of the bed. Evelyn was up, and she hugged me from behind, silently crying. She said she was sorry, she was very anxious that she might lose her career opportunity after pregnancy, and that's why she got angry. I told her I was just mad at the way she spoke, the rest was fine, and I would never force her, though I really wanted to be a father and have a family with her. I guess I had to wait for it to happen. We made out and slept. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night to a giggling sound, and when I opened my eyes, Evelyn was not there. I went out of my room to see her, and I saw her laughing and talking to someone in the dark. I thought maybe it was someone from her office or a friend, so I went back to the bed. I didn't want to doubt her without any reason. It was two in the morning, which was bothering me, but I slept again. I woke up in the morning to Evelyn's kiss. She was in a good mood and had made breakfast for me. Before I could ask her, she told me that her cousin had drunk called her last night. I felt relieved that things had finally settled down, and we had our best moments after a month of arguments. While we were still having breakfast, she got a call from Jenna, and she started congratulating her. I asked her what happened, and she handed me the phone. Jenna told me that she was two months pregnant and that Max and Jenna were going to be parents. I asked why she hid it for two months, and she told me that she didn't know either. I laughed so hard, and Evelyn and I decided to visit them. My parents were also coming, and we decided to have a small family celebration after hearing the news of my sister's pregnancy. Somewhere, I felt empty because I also wanted to have a kid, but until then, I was blessed to be an uncle. When we went there, I hugged Jenna. I was just so happy for my little sister. But instead of hugging Jenna, Evelyn ran towards Max, and he took her in her arms and hugged her. My parents were already there, and after a while, Max's parents also arrived. It was a good family gathering, but Evelyn and Max were continuously chit-chatting on their own, making eye contact and funny faces, and joking about something. Something that I had no idea about. It was clearly making Jenna uncomfortable. Jenna asked Evelyn when she was going to give us good news, and Max immediately said, Evelyn, don't get pregnant or you will lose your hot figure, and laughed it off. Evelyn told him that she would never dare to think about pregnancy and that she was not stupid like Jenna to exchange her slim body just for a baby. Max laughed and said it doesn't matter for Jenna because she anyway never had a hot body. Everyone was shocked at his statement, but he started laughing, saying that he was kidding and not to take it to heart. My anger was rushing down my veins, and I told Evelyn that being a mother isn't stupid and Jenna had the guts to do it. I warned Max not to bully my sister, but Jenna defended him, saying that it was okay between them. After a while, Evelyn stood up and went to sit next to Max. I never liked Max's hand gestures or how he was placing his hands on her thighs. Max grabbed her waist and made the nastiest comment about how flexible Evelyn was. There's no doubt about why every guy had eyes on her in college and how he wished Jenna to be flexible and dress like her. My rage was uncontrollable, and I asked him to be respectful to my sister. I wanted to punch him but stopped myself from creating any scene. Evelyn gave me a look and whispered that I was overreacting and that she was just joking. 
I told her that bashing someone's looks isn't sarcastic, but immoral. It was so frustrating that I went outside on the lawn to calm down. Evelyn understood and followed me outside. She asked me what happened. I held her arms tightly and said, Ask Max not to touch you like that, or else I'll smack his head. She asked me why I even married her when I couldn't handle her popularity, to which I replied that it was not popularity, letting others touch you is cheap and classless. She bit her tongue and went inside. Even after this discussion, Evelyn didn't care to bother. When I went inside, I saw her feeding ice cream to Max. I told everyone that we were leaving and gestured at Evelyn to get up. Jenna kept asking me what was wrong, and I told her it was nothing, it was just that I wasn't feeling well and my head was hurting. We had a huge argument after reaching home. She said that I was just an insecure man and that I was overreacting. I asked her if it would be fine if I grabbed a girl in front of her and claimed how flexible she was. She said that she just didn't care, and she would never change her way for me. I asked her, okay, do whatever she wants to, but don't ever ruin my sister's day like that ever again. She said Jenna was her friend first before her husband's sister, and she never ruined her day, and whatever happened was normal between them. We didn't talk for days after the argument because I realized there was no point in talking to her. She was just such an emotionless and inconsiderate person. Ten days passed in a blink, and I had to leave my job for another six months with a heavy heart. The night before I was leaving, she spoke to me and apologized for her behavior. I didn't say anything, I just smiled and hugged her. I did not have a good feeling about it. I didn't even feel intimate with her. I was not even angry, I was just restless, it's been a week since I returned to work, but I don't feel right here as well. Somewhere, I feel my marriage is crumbling, and I cannot do anything about it. Update 1 I came back home two weeks ago after three months of deployment. Trust me, things have gotten messy, and it was never like that before. Even though I used to be at work for six months, we never felt distant from each other. Now, whether we are in the same place or away from each other, we are just far from each other. Her behavior has gotten flaky, and her tone has turned really off and irritating. Even if I tried video calling her, she would never respond. She was just brutally rude to me. She didn't feed me excuses that she was busy or something, she would just straight away say that she didn't want to talk to me. She never received my call and ignored my text, 250 text messages in a day. I asked her if she wanted to talk it out and sort it out, but she never wanted to respond. On the other hand, I would only see her Instagram story, she was busy partying and socializing. She wasn't even hiding that from me. This was the first time she was behaving in this way. In my previous overseas trip, we were always connected with each other romantically and sexually on FaceTime, and that's what made the distance bearable. I was not missing her, I was angry at her childish behavior, and I just wanted to teach her a lesson about her so-called elegant and rich spoiled girl behavior. Things went on like this for three months straight, and I was also very occupied with work, so I didn't have time to think about checking her Instagram stories. I also started to ignore her because Evelyn tends to react when you treat her the same way she does to you, and I knew this would work. After three months, she called me and told me that she was sorry for ignoring me, and that was because she was stressed. I could tell that she was not lying, and when I asked her what was wrong, she told me that she hadn't bled for three months straight and that she was so busy with work that she didn't even notice. I asked her if she had taken the pregnancy test, she said yes but the results were not reliable, so the doctor asked her for the HCG blood test. I didn't understand the meaning of an unreliable pregnancy test, I thought it was accurate anyway. The report was supposed to come in a few hours, so I thought to just wait for that and see. I was so restless and impatient that I couldn't work for the rest of the day. When the report came, she was 11 weeks pregnant. Evelyn was crying over the call and said she was scared that the baby would ruin her career. I wanted to convince her to keep the baby, but I left the decision to her. I told her not to worry and that I would be there in 10 days. I asked her what her decision was, and she told me that the doctor had asked her not to abort as it was risky due to her low blood level, as she was treated with plastic anemia as a teen. While she was still crying and worrying about everything, 
I was very stressed thinking about how she could be pregnant because we always use protection, but due to her condition, I couldn't bring myself to ask her. I applied for an emergency leave and decided to come back home as soon as possible. It still took me more than a month to wrap up my work and return home. I didn't inform her about the date of my return, wanting to surprise her. But on reaching home, I was surprised instead to see Max there, sitting on the couch shirtless and fixing his belt. I got so scared to see that, and my brain started making its own stories. I stood there like a ghost at the door until Max saw me and greeted me nervously. His nervous laugh made my suspicions higher, but I couldn't just say a thing and greet him back. There came Evelyn, and after seeing me, she came towards me and hugged me tightly. I didn't look at her face but at her clothes, and much to my relief, she was appropriately dressed. Evelyn hugged me and thanked me for coming early and surprising her. I asked her what Max was doing there, sitting shirtless. Evelyn explained that she needed some groceries but was too tired to step out, so she asked Max to get them for her. But accidentally, she spilled the glass of juice over his t-shirt, he had to wash it and was drying it, sitting there shirtless when I entered. Her voice was so calm that I almost believed her, but my instincts could not, and it sounded like a whole lie. I can't keep acting like a fool, I gave a cold stare at Max, and he understood that I wasn't liking his presence. He got up and said he would go and give the news of my arrival to Jenna. After Max left and I settled down, I asked her again if she really wanted to have the baby. She got a little offended and told me that sooner or later, it was going to happen. I couldn't resist and confronted her, saying that I found it very strange that she got pregnant despite using protection. She asked me whether I blamed her for infidelity and told her it was my right to ask because I remembered clearly that we used protection every time. She said she had a hunch the condom was damaged, as she felt something inside her that night but didn't pay much attention to it. I was still confused and told her that if that had happened, I would have known immediately. She got defensive, stood up, and left the room, calling me pathetic and sick for doubting her. Her behavior added to my fury. I was under complete stress because I knew something was off, and I was clearly not the father. I did love her a lot, but she was manipulating me. The woman who never wanted a kid suddenly got pregnant and agreed to it. It's been two weeks since I returned, and we had that discussion, and she still is not talking to me properly. Whenever I approach her, she accuses me of doubting her and calls me insecure. Now I really don't know how to deal with this woman. Update, hello, guys. It's been a few months since I last updated. I was just busy juggling multiple issues together. I'll start with some good news. My sister gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. I just want to tell you guys that my niece is going to live her life without the presence of her douchebag father because Max is going to take care of Evelyn's kid. After I returned, a week went by where Evelyn was angry and frustrated with me most of the time and blamed her pregnancy hormones for everything. I was in a dilemma, wondering most of the time if the baby I'm going to raise is really mine. In the middle of all this, I got a call from my mother that Jenna's health was off and she needed to get admitted ASAP. The next week, I was busy taking care of Jenna. I mean, it wasn't like Max wasn't present but his presence was useless as he was mostly not around her and busy somewhere else, God knows where. I wanted to talk to Jenna about my anxiety, but she was not in a state to absorb any shock. The doctor told us not to talk about anything that could trigger any stress, so I waited for the right time to talk to her about my issue. After a week, when Jenna's condition stabilized, she told me that she didn't want to meet Max and wanted to divorce him immediately. Jenna held my hands and asked me to be strong and hear her out. My heart sank, I knew what was coming. She told me that after I left for work, Evelyn used to visit her often. It was usual for Evelyn to crash at Jenna's place, as they usually hung out at her place in my absence. She said that eventually she found Max and Evelyn so engrossed in each other that they forgot that Jenna existed, and their behavior started bothering her. So she sneaked into Max's phone one day and saw Max and Evelyn's chats, they were just fooling around, from casual flirts to sharing hot and raunchy memes. Jenna confronted Max and Evelyn about that, and they both apologized to her and told her that it wouldn't happen again. 
I asked her why she didn't tell me about that. She said I was overseas and, hence, didn't want to bother me. She said that a day before I arrived, Evelyn came with flowers and stuff for Jenna, but she was asleep. When she woke up, she saw Max and Evelyn making out in the other room. She freaked out, and that caused her bleeding, her condition got worse, and Max continued apologizing to her. She rushed to the hospital, and within a few days, her condition stabilized, I lost my mind. I hugged Jenna and yelled that I was here. At that time, why didn't she tell me? She said that Evelyn was pregnant, and she didn't want to ruin our relationship at that time. When her condition stabilized, she had a confrontation with Max and learned that Evelyn was actually pregnant with his baby. That blew her mind. She had a panic attack, and her condition worsened to the extent that she almost lost her baby. She wanted to call me and tell me, but due to her anxiety, she just didn't know what to do and rushed to the hospital. From there, she called mom, and that's how we all got to know that she was unwell. God knows where Max was all this time, maybe inside my wife's skirt. I don't know what else to say. My sister and I cried our hearts out, holding each other. I couldn't imagine the pain she carried on her shoulder, knowing her husband was never loyal. I didn't think any further and decided to divorce Evelyn as soon as possible, but I also wanted to beat the hell out of Max. I called my father and explained everything. I asked him to start the process of getting divorce papers for me and for Jenna as well. I also asked him to mention the full custody of Jenna's unborn child to Jenna solely in the divorce terms, as I don't want Max's involvement in Jenna's life or her babies. That night, when I reached home, I saw Evelyn crying on the couch. She looked at me and said that I always wanted her to be a mother, but now that she was, I was neglecting her. I laughed and told her that I wanted her to be pregnant with my child, not Max's child. She remained silent. I walked towards her and, with a cold stare, told her that Jenna had told me everything. It was for them that my sister was on the verge of losing her child. I told her that if she cared about herself, she should pray for my sister and her unborn child because if they suffered from anything, I was going to drag both her and Max to court and make their lives miserable. Before she could say anything, I yelled at her to leave my house and that she would get the divorce papers in a few days. She started apologizing and asked me to stay and not abandon her. She also told me that Max was the one who seduced her into this. Jenna had a complicated pregnancy, and they were forbidden to have intercourse, so Max was craving it, and Hansi seduced Evelyn into this. I felt so disgusted upon hearing that I wanted to throw up. I left the house giving her the ultimatum of a day to vacate. I stayed with Jenna for a few days, and when I came back, Evelyn was gone. As for Max, he just accepted his fate and never tried talking to Jenna or even fighting for shared custody. It felt as if he had been released from a married life. Anyway, the divorce got finalized, and we finally got rid of the two douchebags. Even though Evelyn's father bribed me by saying that I would never have to pay for Evelyn's baby and that he would take care of that, he said that I'd just have to let Evelyn and her child live with me to save their family's name. I could only laugh at his suggestion.